run several six-figure businesses doing well over a million dollars a month, and you do it sort of like a solo printer style. Totally. Yeah, I work from my home. Got this little studio that we built in my garage for these types of events or for my live streams. But yeah, I mean, all my, I guess, quote unquote, staff is in their own locations all over the world. Um, but yeah, I'm on the road all the time, traveling with my family. Really, I mean, in all intents and purposes, running this thing from a cell phone, really, is kind of the way I like to run my business. But yeah, definitely uh, try to try to create a business that I want to have and, and run a certain way rather than a business that runs me ragged. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yes, I do know what you're saying. I'm a big fan of automation, as you know, and making sure that you're not working yourself to death, that you still get to enjoy your life. And I want to get into that because not only are you one of the people, like one of the only people I know who runs the type of business you run that is earning the kind of money that you make without having like a major, major operation, but you also travel like what a third of the year with your family at least yeah i mean last year it was probably more than that we were we we're getting like letters from the school now that are like dude your kids need to come to school bro <laughs> and i'm like why like they're fine like they're cool they're learning more on the road going different places than they would at your stupid school but uh <laughs> no we you know look i want to have a good time i want my kids to be able to experience different things and so being able to get out of town quite often is is super important to us and um you know, I think that's the whole intrigue of running an internet business is that you can literally work from a laptop or from a cell phone from anywhere in the world. If, of course, you have the right people in place, the systems in place, the processes in place, right? And I think we got that. And listen, at the start of this year, I just kind of like, I went through this time where, you know, I've had my ups and my downs as every entrepreneur will have. And I kind of just told my wife, like, hey, look, I'm going to kind of I'm going to live off this motto to just care less. Stop caring so much about what everyone thinks about you, though, necessarily the way you look. Of course, my dreads are clean. It's got them tightened up last night. But <laughs> but this whole motto, I feel like so many people, the reason they don't get stuff done, the reason they don't go into business, the reason they don't go and have a sales conversation or, or make a business owner an offer, whatever it is that you do, is because they're so concerned what people care about. Well, what are they going to think about me? What if they tell me no? What if they're going to do this? What if they're going to do that? And it's like, who fucking cares? Like, seriously, at the end of the day, like, I don't care. Like, I like going into situations. I like putting myself in situations where someone's going to look at me and like, who the hell is that dude? And then still be able to make a million dollars a month, $2 million a month and upwards, right? My goal right now is 10 million a month is where I'm trying to get to, right? And I like being able to do it on my own terms, looking the way that I want to look, driving the car that I want to drive, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And I think so many people want to fit into this, um, this box that everyone else has told them they have to fit into. You know, you can, you guys have all seen it. You guys have seen the guys as seen on Forbes, as seen on Forbes. Like, come on, <laughs> you're fucking bullshitting us. You weren't seen on Forbes. You paid someone a hundred dollars so you could put that little logo and you got the nice little suit on. And that's all fine and dandy and I'm not even mad at that. I'm just saying, I don't want to be that guy. When everyone zigs, I want to zag. I want to be different than everyone. And I want to be a leader for the people that are going through, whether my mentorship or my training, that it do no matter what you know uh, handicap you think you have, it's bullshit. You got to stop caring about it so much because it's all concocted in your own brain. Like I'll get on your live streams and I see that you have like hundreds and hundreds of people, sometimes thousands of people commenting and they're on your live stream. And that's in a private group of your clients. Right. It's insane. Like the, the amount of um, engagement that you get just by, I would say, just by being yourself. That's the freaking problem is everyone's a copycat of, of what they think is the right way of doing things. And I know you from you working on our sales stuff and our sales pages, as you see it, they're the ugliest, they're the nastiest, they're the most non congruent with what any marketing coach or trainer or teacher would tell you to look at. And, <laughs> and it works better than anyone else out there in the space. And I, I, I know this for a fact, cause I know most every major player out there in the marketing space is you don't have to be a clone or a drone of every other person out there like have some personality be a little bit different 
and stop caring so much that you, you that that you don't get out of your own way. I think that's the biggest message I could bring to this crowd. Well, maybe one of them that you guys could take from this. Whatever business you're in, stop giving a fuck so much about what everyone says you need to act like, says you need to look like, says you, your your landing page needs to feel like. Dude, do you? And you know what? It's gonna be a breath of fresh air for a lot of these people that see your stuff and you're like, I don't know why I like this. Or I don't know why I like that girl or I like that guy. But there's just something about them that's authentic and different, you know? And that's, to me, where you win in marketing. It's not just being a copycat. At the end of the day, I get people every day, even people that have bought, you know, bought some of our training and whatnot. I have this guy a couple weeks back and he's just like, bro, you know, I bought it, but you're, you're, dude, you're just not, you're not very professional. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> I became an entrepreneur because I couldn't stand conforming to being professional. I worked where I had to show up with a, a suit and a tie. And if the tie wasn't perfect and if the shirt wasn't crisp, like they were sending you home. And so like, I got into this space because I was sick of the man telling me what I had to show up. I want to show up in sweatpants and a hooded sweatshirt and do whatever the heck I want to do every stinking day of my life. I don't want someone telling me, hey, bro, you got to look like this. You got to act like this. You can't say that. You can't do this. You got to show up at 8 a.m. You got to leave at five o'clock. Like that sounds miserable. And this person that said this to me, I go. You're telling me that's what you want and that's what you equate to professionalism. What I create to equate to professionalism is I make a shit ton of money. I know you can too, okay? By following the processes and the systems and the in the in um the trainings that we've laid out, like that's the end game. I didn't come on this earth to just work under someone's thumb and let them tell me how I got to act for my whole life. I want to be me and I want to do it on my terms. Mm -hmm. So the deck was definitely not necessarily stacked in my favor. Both my homes were underwater, you know, like a lot of motherfuckers who just said, hey, I'm going to let my, my house go. I wasn't willing to do that. I wasn't willing to give up on what I already told the banks I agreed to pay them. So I was like, no, I got to hustle. Okay, yeah, I just got laid off. I probably got fired, let's be honest. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, well, there were some choice words back and forth, but it was just my time. Right? It was my time to to get out of doing what was comfortable for me, which was I could always sell cars. I could always go back and get a job and you know, work for Toyota and do all that stuff. But it was my time to, to, to spread my wings and, and, and I guess exercise this entrepreneurial spirit that was really always has always been a part of me. And we could talk about some of those early day stories in just a minute. But yeah, like in all intents and purposes, I have two homes. One I'm going negative every month on. One's a mortgage I shouldn't be able to afford at the time. I got two car payments. The daughter's just born. My wife is in law school and I got no income now. And I'm like, all right, this is interesting. <laughs> Okay. I have really no internet background, but what I saw the internet, when I, when I looked at the internet, it did what I wanted to be able to, or what I saw my life being, which was I could work from anywhere. I don't necessarily have to have employees that report to me because I was, I was in management in the car business and I had all these little freaking kids that I had to babysit every day. And that's exactly what it is. When you get into upper management or you own a business, you have all these employees, it's freaking babysitting. So I didn't want to have a business where I'm constantly just serving it. I wanted it to ultimately serve me. The internet fit that mold, fit that model for me. Right. And so knowing nothing about the internet, I was like, dude, I need to buy some training. Like I gotta, I gotta find someone that I vibe with that has a good model. And I don't know what that model is, but has a good model. And if I can learn from them and pick up some new skill sets, then I'm going to go out there and build a business, you know, that, that is going to fit the mold of what I can see myself doing. Now, if shit hits the fan and like, no matter what, if I freaking can't figure it out, look, I could find another car dealership that would probably take me on, even though car sales at that time wasn't the best thing to be doing. But I knew deep down, like I always had a plan B, even though I never, ever, ever wanted to exercise it. It was deep in my brain. So when I told my wife, I was like, look, I ain't going back to the car business. I'm going to build a business. I'm going to build an internet business. And she's going, dude, you know nothing about the internet. And I'm like, <laughs> and th listen, this is really, this is really powerful because I, I think most people don't do this. And I'm, so listen to what I'm about to say. I told my wife this, I said, listen, I'm going to build an internet business and look at me. It's going to work. This isn't a if, this isn't a freaking maybe. Okay. I'm going to make this work. And so here's the fucked up thing with people that try to be entrepreneurs. I just got a message. I'm looking at my phone right before you and I got on. This guy writes me and he goes, I'm going to pull it over here. He said, if, he said, if, if this works, I'm going to be so grateful 
that I bought this training from you. And I go, if? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. I was like, you're already broken, right? You're already broken. You've already lost. You've already given up. You're already at, you're, you're basically already with a foot out the door. So I believe that people, when they get into entrepreneurial uh, ventures, they have that mentality, the if mentality. Oh man, I really, I really hope this this works. Man, if it works, man, life's gonna be so great. And then the other mentality is, everything I do works. Okay, that's my mentality. That's it might be fucking bullshit, by the way. Okay, but in my mind, I tell myself, I sell myself that whatever business that I'm getting into, it's going to work. I don't get into business if it's not going to work. So it's up to me to make something work before I get into it. I need to make that conscious decision. So with my wife, I said, listen, this is going to work. I'm going to make this shit happen. Drew my foot, drew the line in the sand in front of her. And I'm like, you coming with me or you're not. And I knew she's coming with me because listen, with that kind of conviction and with that type of, of foot uh, line in the sand, I drew the line and said, let's go. And, and if more entrepreneurs took that type of mentality instead of this pussy ass bullshit where they're if this and maybe that, dude, you're fucking done before you started. Just go back to your fucking job. <laughs> no, seriously. Oh, it's, awesome. funny, it's funny, but it's, it's honestly, because you know as well as I do, entrepreneurialism, what we do, it's a mental game. Man, you got to hype yourself up, psych yourself out that you're going to go out there and create something and make something today, every day, every single day. For sure. And the minute you hesitate, the competitors are taking you out. You're going backwards. You know, you're, you're, it's, so it's so much of what we do. It's just a mental game. You know, when I was young, I always, for whatever reason, had this, this, I had this, uh, I was gravitating towards money. I didn't come from money, right? My dad was a pastor. Um, so, so if my dad, dad's listening, I didn't really mean to say the F word 17 times already on this live stream, whatever. <laughs> but no, so we didn't come from money, but for whatever reason, I was from, from very young, like four, five, six years old. Every time we went to the grocery store, the first thing I would do is I'd run across the street, look both ways, of course. Then I'd go <laughs> and I'd check the um, the newspaper uh, where, where, you know, they don't really have it much anymore, but there's, you put a quarter in and get a newspaper out. But oftentimes that quarter would drop all the way through and it'd be in the little change bucket. So I'd go there and I'd check every stinking one of them. I hit the, I'd hit the um, like, give me my money back little button. It's like, pink. Mm-hmm. I'd check it. And you know what? I would find money, not every time, but I would look every time. Right. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'd find it. Sometimes I wouldn't. But I was always looking. I went and hit every stinking newspaper uh, box and I hit the give me my money back button. And I look for a quarter, look for a quarter, look for a quarter every time I went to the grocery store. Same thing is true. After I do that, I would run over to the water machine. The water machine, people would oftentimes drop the quarter or the dime or the nickel and it would fall below the machine, which was nasty and grimy and dirty. But every time I knew there'd be some change underneath there. So I'd slide underneath that little suck and I'd find a dime, <laughs> a nickel, a quarter. But I was always looking for money. Okay. Phone, phone booths. They, they, they don't really exist anymore, but the same thing is true. Anytime I see a phone booth in anywhere I went, I'd run up to it and hit the little lever. Ding, 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 ding. Sometimes a quarter would pop out. Okay. But the, but the moral of the story is, is like, as an entrepreneur, we have to be looking for money at all times. Okay. Making money is a habit. Okay. Just as every time I go to the grocery store, it was a habit for me to go and check all those different places where money potentially could be for a five-year-old or a six-year-old. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those were, that was the resource that I had to go find money. And guess what? I found it all the time because I was always looking and I habitually went back to those same slots where money popped out before. Doesn't mean money's always going to be in places you're looking, but if you stop looking, you'll absolutely make zero money. Everyone wants to sugarcoat everything. They want to pat you on the back and give you the fucking trophy for getting 17th place. I don't. I want you to have 17 million in the bank and then we can talk about trophies. Okay. That's more important if you're an entrepreneur than, you know, feeling warm and fuzzy in your pants about, you know, I just had such a great day making an impact on like, come on guys, we're in business to make money. Of course, we want to make a difference along the way, sell awesome products and awesome services, but guys get, get it straight in your brain. Your job is to show up and bring in cash every day for whatever business you're doing. Doesn't matter what it is. That's the definition, in my opinion, of a business owner or an entrepreneur. The one thing I gravitated towards was lead generation. I listened to this guy early on, kind of like while I was in the car business, and he he talked about this, he bought this lead generation company, and like it always fascinated me. Like, wow, there's companies that just generate leads, and this guy was, I think he bought it for like a million dollars, this lead gen company. And I was like, someday I'm gonna figure out how to do what that guy just bought, because it just, 
I don't know, something just vibe. So as I got kind of into the, the marketing world and the internet world or what have you, um, I ended up buying this training from this guy who is actually now one of my clients and I help him and I've helped his business grow. I think it's like 180 grand a month right now. Okay. Over the last eight months. Okay. But I bought his training. It was a DVD back then. It wasn't even, he didn't even deliver it to you on the internet. So I got this DVD of how to rank basic little crappy sites and get them in the, like, the Google maps section. Okay. And the whole premise to this was you can go out to small business owners and charge them for your knowledge of how to do this for them. So in the, in the world of the internet, a lot of people call this search engine optimization, right? So I started doing that and I started figuring out it wasn't really all that difficult. I'm like, wow, even an idiot can pull this off. That's cool. And businesses started paying me, exchanging their dollars for my expertise. And then I, I started to see some of these business owners would pay me for a while. I do all this work for them and then they'd kind of fall off and they'd be like, we're at number one. We're doing good. If anything ever changes, dude, we'll just call you back. And I'm like, this is stupid. I'm literally, I've went through all this training. I learned the skill set. I implement the skill set. I get the results. And then they let me go at a certain point because I really can't get them better than number one or number two or whatever they were at. Like they're, they're, at the, they're at the pinnacle. And so they're just like, hey, why would I keep paying this guy? I'll just call you if I ever fall off the pinnacle. So I'm like, I got to change the model. And so I moved the model from this service-based type strategy to a, um, I call it like a digital real estate strategy, right? So now I won't go to business owners and say, hey, I can do this for you. I just go out and do it. So it started all of this taxi business. This is pre-Uber, by the way. Uber was just getting rolling on the East Coast. So I saw taxis in our in our marketplace and I was like, wow, um, that people get on the internet, and they look for taxis and there's really no brand recognition. So if it's, it's not like Nike and Reebok, it's basically like, hey, taxi's number one, I'm gonna hit the call button and I'm gonna call that number. So I'm like, what if I could build a taxi business that I own no vehicles, and I just took the phone call and forwarded the phone call to the, the businesses that wanted or had a, had the most vehicles and had the most desire for more business. So it's exactly what I did. I took all the skills that I learned from some of those previous trainings I bought, built a little taxi, a shitty taxi site, by the way, just horrible, horrendous. <laughs> right? uh, got this phone number that I owned, right? So I, I own the, the phone line 541-782-TAXI. And I took that and I got it on the web just as I had been trained. I got that thing to the number one spot in the marketplace I was in. and Lo and behold, people started calling my my taxi business, which is just ran a little bit different ways than these new old school guys. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. I'm the new school taxi, right? So this thing started getting phone calls. I called up a taxi company. I said, listen, I'm getting calls for people looking for taxis in our market. I don't own any taxi cabs. Can I send them your way? Yeah, dude, send them away. I go, cool. I'm going to call you in a week from now. And in a week, we'll see if this is mutually beneficial if you want to keep getting the calls. If not, no big deal. Boom. Forward in the calls, you know, 50 calls a day, bang, 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 coming in. I call him a week from now. I'm like, bro, how's it going? He said, dude, it's incredible. He goes, keep it coming. I go, cool. Well, I'm not doing it for free because I'm not a charity. I'm a business. He goes, well, what do you charge? And I'm like, this is my very first client. So this is like an idea to uh, actual reality. I just make up a number. I'm like, oh, it's two bucks a call. That's my, my going rate. And he's like, done. I'm like, sick. So every day <laughs> I got this this phone number that I sprinkled out onto the web. I sprinkled it in hundreds of locations all over. I got my site, I got my local maps, I got everything. And this phone number is getting banged 50 times a day. So every time that phone rings, a $2 bill gets its wings to me, right? <laughs> so I'm going, I'm going, wow. So all of a sudden I got this income stream from this, this piece of real estate I've produced out onto the web, you know, this phone number that I own, I control. And if, if they ever want to fire me, I don't just lose all the work and effort I put into this. I own it all. It's my asset. It's like a piece of real estate, right? Mm -hmm. So I go, I'm going to do this again. So I created a tow truck company, same process, same training, same sprinkled the phone, this new phone number all over the web. Next thing you know, I'm getting people looking for tow trucks. Again, it's not Nike and Reebok. There's no brand loyalty when it comes to, I need a tow truck right now, or I need a taxi right now, or I need a plumber right now. There's not a brand loyalty. People think there is, but there's not. And I've proven this, you know, we get hundreds of thousands of calls a month at this point. So we, we know this and we've done it all over the world. The bottom line was I saw the process work again. I'm like, dude, this is sick. Like I literally now create, I own a new piece of real estate and I, I up the ante. I said, it's three bucks a call to this guy. By the way, that was 10 years ago. I'm still being paid to this day from these clients. Okay. Unreal. Cause they know if they walk away, if they walk away. I just turn the phone line off and go to their competitor. So I'm in the driver's seat. So the model that has kind of came from what I just explained to you as my early days in this space was I trained this gal. She was second 
uh, she was she was at the University of Oregon at the time, and she, uh, English was her second language. I made a bunch of videos. And I'm like, hey, I want to automate, I guess, or outsource, and I want to go bigger, faster. Mm -hmm. So you need to go through these training videos. So I took someone that knew nothing about the web, walked her through step by step, and all of a sudden, now this gal is pumping out these, I call them lead gen properties. She's pumping these lead gen properties out for me. And then I'm just going out there, getting the business owner connected A with B and taking my little sliver to deliver. And so very quickly I realized, holy shit, I just trained someone that knows nothing about the space. And they're basically responsible for all these lead gen properties I have out on the web that are making me money. That means I could probably train anyone that anyone this strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay. If this girl whose English is her second language, she's able to do this, then I could train an entrepreneur that's in Wichita, Kansas, how to do this. Or France or, you know, the UK, it doesn't matter. So I have this business where I'm building all these digital assets, these, all these lead gen properties. So they have massive time leverage. Once I build them once I rent them out, I make money on them year after year after year, month after month after month. Right. Mm -hmm. Same thing is true with like a digital training. So as I created this for my outsource gal, I figured, wow, I could literally sell someone a password into this training. And I only had to make the training once or once per year. Cause I, I always update my training, right? Mm -hmm. That's a really good asset. Cause imagine I could sell a thousand people or 3,700 people into this training and I'm not physically getting on and doing one-on-one -on -one work. So in all intents and purposes, it's another piece of digital real estate that I've created. So I would challenge every one of you guys listening in. If you have a very specific skill set that you've been able to put into some sort of a process, there's don't have such a small mindset that, well, if I teach people, it's going to saturate, blah, 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 blah. Dude, not going to happen. Okay. There are so many humans on this earth. There's so many different opportunities. There's people that speak different languages, what have you. Okay. If you have a process, I don't care if it's window tinting. I don't care if it's writing a book, a process, people will pay for a process so they can shortcut their way to the results quicker. So just like I in, uh, teach people to create these digital assets for these local lead gen properties. I also encourage people like once you have a process down to also put it into a digital format that you can create some leverage with and, and sell consistently, you know, through podcasts or through YouTube videos or through SEO or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. So the basic, the basic premise to what we train people to do, and I know that was a really long answer, but I think it's important that people see the full scope of what we do. Mm -hmm. We basically teach them to create digital real estate where they can rent out whether by lead, by a flat fee, whatever it might be. And we teach you a bunch of different models to small business owners. And these small business owners basically you have by the balls, which is a good thing because you're actually helping their business grow to heights they would have never seen. My tow truck driver said, I'd be back in jail if it wasn't for you. I'd be out of business back in jail if it wasn't for you being able to produce these leads for me for the last 10 years. Okay. So we're, we're helping these business owners immensely, but we're also keeping control so they can't just suck our knowledge dry from us and then say, we'll call you back when things don't go the way we want it to go. It puts you in the driver's seat. It's literally like owning physical real estate. By the way, I own a ton of physical real estate, apartment complexes, mobile home parks. You never get a call saying, Hey, the toilet's clogged. Like you do in physical real estate, right? You might get, Hey, can you get more leads for me? But that's a good problem to have. So mm -hmm. it's not a cheap program, but what I will say is one client is generally worth about 750 bucks a month, about 9,000 bucks a year. Uh, one client pays, pays your way through the door. So if you have a little bit of belief, if you're not one of these, if people, if you're not one of these maybe people that we talked about earlier, and you can see that business model uh, running out, you see the value in that business model. I think we're the best in the business to do so, to train you. My belief is if you treat people and you give people an experience that is memorable, they're happy to pay a little bit of a premium for that experience. I'd rather have that experience and spend a little bit more than have the Motel 6 get some bed bugs, a shitty <laughs> night's sleep, and whatever to try to save a couple bucks. You can't save your way to wealth. You just can't. We got to make more money. And I think if we can give people an experience where the su support, the service, and the product is second to none, we can't lose, which is why we continue to grow year in and year out. I'm um, speaking at an event with uh, the Wolf of Wall Street on Saturday, Sunday. And uh, one of the girls that came in early to our program, I remember her. I took her phone call four years ago. She had no online experience whatsoever. And she did seven figures last year. Top line, of course, but seven figures lead generation, exactly what we train. And she told me, I remember I got on the phone and she's like, Hey, if this doesn't work, I'm gonna come find you and hunt you down and slit your throat. And I'm like, I like you already. You got a little grit to you. Okay. But, but, um, 
yeah, I mean, it's like, it, it, I don't care what walk of life. I'm, my 10 year old's going through the training. She's building her own lead gen- generation business. I want to prove to people like a 10 year old can do this, mm-hmm. right? Which she can. She's already built her first site. She's got her first lead gen property up and we're just working her through the, the process. She's taking everything in. And it's just, it's so cool that you can create these types of properties out on the web. And like you just said, there's no reason not to do it. You can't give me a reason to not go and own another rental home or own another rental piece of real estate. If it brings you passive income and you can easily apply it and get it done, then freaking go do it. 